Hello, I'm Richard with ev for You Custom Conversions. Now, I'm going to apologize up front for the sound quality, and that's because we are in a warehouse. This is going to be filmed entirely in a warehouse, though it's going to be in the real world here. And the real world is that we are in a metal warehouse in a commercial industrial area where there's a lot of noise, not necessarily created by us, but the environment around us. So uh, that direction, uh, to the west, we have a highway, four-lane highway. You know, it's only uh, a few hundred yards away. To the east, we have the interstate. Parallel to the interstate, on this side of the interstate, we have railroad tracks, and there's two sets of rails. So there's just a huge amount of noise, and we're completely surrounded by you know, other businesses. So just bear with us. You know, we, we have a limited amount of time to do this in, and so hopefully the noise doesn't cause us too great of a problem. But just wanted to bring that up front, you know, out up front. So, the other is we got fans going because it is hot in here. <laughs> and normally we'd have uh, more cooling going, but to do that is more noise. And you can see that it just becomes a vicious cycle. So anyway, welcome that a conversion needs to fill three things. And, and that's the minimum, okay? And those are, it must be safe, simple, and reliable. Safety first, you know, because safety is number one importance. Number two, simple. One of the biggest mistakes people make is they make this very simple process, they make it overly complicated. And, you know, I can remember, you know, talking to people over the years where, you know, they did their conversion a year or two ago, and they're still working out the bugs. Well, what the heck did you do? You know, there's only six components, main components to a conversion. And we'll talk about those in, in a bit. And what you remove from the vehicle, the internal combustion components, it's a thousand times more complicated than what we put in. What we're doing is very simple. And in order for it to be safe and reliable, keep it simple, okay? So you'll probably hear me say it again, safe, simple, and reliable. That's the bottom line for a conversion. Now, a saying uh, that we've had uh, was on our original marketing vehicle under the bonnet of our original bug, uh, red bug you might have seen on the internet. And it's a, it's a quote by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. And it says that in character, in manners, in style, in all things, the supreme excellence is simplicity. And I hope you pick that up as we go along, that we're going to design something that is safe, simple, and reliable. So let's get started. And again, Welcome, and thank you for joining me. So the first thing we're going to start off with, now that we got the, some of the small talk out of the way, is, you know, we're going to talk about the big picture. It's about understanding the big picture. And so, for instance, you know, we're going to talk about, you know, the components that are used, why it's used, how it's used, how it's wired, where you should locate it, and, and whether you need it or not, and uh, what size, capacity, the rating, all that stuff we're gonna, we're gonna discuss. And we're doing that so that, you know, to meet the objective, and one of those objectives is uh, to build confidence uh, that you could do this yourself based on the knowledge that you're gonna get. And so we're gonna cover all the systems not just the components. We're going to 
cover all the systems, including electrical, mechanical, physical. You're going to get some rules of thumb. Uh, talk about how to calculate range, motor size, controller size, charger size, much, much more. And we're going to include topics such as troubleshooting, safety, maintenance. We've got graphs and schematics and photos. And we've got some actual vehicles here. So all of that to help, you know, achieve our objectives. Electric vehicles, uh, they've been around since 1865. And in 1900, the number one selling vehicle in the United States was an ele were electric cars. They, 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 sold, they all sold all other types of cars in 1900. But in 1900, the mix of vehicles on American roads, the number one vehicle on the roads was steam powered. 40% of the cars on the road in 1900 were steam powered. Now you don't think about that or hear about that much anymore. They kind of uh, came and went. Like I said, the number one selling vehicle that year uh, or vehicles were electric. But only 38% of the cars on the road were electric in 1900. And the one that ended up being the majority of the, you know, the propulsion system for most of the cars on the road later on, gasoline, only 22% of the cars in 1900 were gas powered. So why, why didn't steam, why didn't electric, why did gas end up being the dominant one? Well, steam just wasn't practical. It takes a long time for a steam car to get up to the steam, get up to temperature, pressure, and uh, lots of hassle factor. Electric, you know, they didn't have electric starters in, so you had to hand crank, you know, the, the uh, gasoline cars. Uh, and they were noisy and they leaked and, you know, they had all sorts of drawbacks. But a bigger drawback was the fact that in 1900, only 5% of the U.S. population had electricity in their home. So unless you lived in, in a big city, you probably didn't have electricity. And so an electric car didn't have much appeal. And so whereas gas could be easily transported in drums, it could be uh, uh, delivered to your car by gravity, um, gas won out. Plus, Henry Ford came along and made the, the gasoline car affordable. Interesting thing was Henry Ford's wife drove an electric car. Anyway, so that's why the trend didn't continue uh, and why gas won out for, for so many years, but electric's having its, uh, its day. It's, gonna, it's, it's so much more efficient and it's going to win out. The first vehicle to ever reach 100 kilometers per hour, or 62 miles per hour, was an electric car. The only vehicle to ever be driven on the moon was an electric vehicle. So electric, you know, even though they uh, weren't mainstream for uh, a long time, uh, it wasn't that they weren't out there doing something. Um, and so brings us up to you know, kind of, to me, an obvious question is uh, why, why aren't we talking about gasoline cars today uh, or hydrogen or fuel cell or something else? Why, why are we talking about electric? Why are you interested in electric cars? The number one thing for me, well, the only thing when it came to the electric car for me personally, and you, you have your own reasons, but mine was about efficiency, period. An electric vehicle is eight times as efficient as internal combustion. It's over twice as efficient as a uh, fuel cell. And so, why? Why would you go any other way? Let's uh, let's start talking about what uh, what we need to know to convert a vehicle from inter internal combustion to electric. 
So we talked about the big picture, and that includes five basic systems and that are used in a conversion. And so we have the 12 volt control circuits, and you know, you'll see that we do it a specific way. We're gonna teach you a specific way. There's more than one way to skin a cat. A lot of people don't do it the way that we do it, but the way that we do it includes these layers of safety. And we'll explain all that when we get to it. But that's one of these five systems is the 12 volt control system. Another system is the traction pack high voltage, high current system. That's the part that actually drives the motor. Okay. Power comes from the battery pack through your controller or inverter to the motor, from the motor to the wheels. That's two systems. Uh, a third system is traction pack voltage but lower current. So like your heater, air conditioning, your DC to DC converter, those things operate off of that traction pack voltage, but at much lower current levels. And then, uh, so that's three, we've got two more. Well, I mentioned one. That's your DC to DC converter. And basically what the DC to DC converter does is it takes your traction pack voltage and converts it to a voltage that will charge your auxiliary battery. And we'll talk about auxiliary batteries and why we use a DC to DC converter and all that later on. So that's four systems now. The last system is your, your charge system, okay, your charging system. So most electric vehicles have an onboard charger. And uh, this charging system will consist of that onboard charger, your charge port where you plug in, and your EVSE, electric vehicle supply equipment, the charge station. So the charge station is getting its power from the grid, or from solar, or from wind, hydro, wherever it's getting its power from. And it delivers that power through the charge port to your charger on board your vehicle, which then charges your traction pack. That's our five systems in a nutshell. Let me go over the 12 volt uh, control circuits real quick that we use. Um, so I mentioned we, we're going to use an auxiliary battery and we're going to uh, have a uh, two, two basic 12 volt supplies. We're going to have an unswitched 12 volts, which is coming directly from the battery, and we're going to have a switched 12 volts. The switch 12 volts is 12 volts that's only available when the ignition is on. Okay, so we're going to have switched and unswitched. And then we're going to have a, a separate fuse block that we're going to put in because we're not going to attach to the vehicle uh, existing circuits in the vehicle. We're not going to attach to any of the you know, circuits in the car. They were designed for a purpose. We're not going to interfere with that, affect that in any way. We're only going to connect to the battery. Then we're going to have uh, uh, so we're going to have an auxiliary fuse block to fuse all of our own circuits that we're going to add for our 12 volt control circuits, as well as other things that uh, you know will be operating off of 12 volts like our cooling system and things like that. And then uh, we're going to have a what we call a safety interlock. Safety interlock is just a device, and then we'll go in depth on all of this. Basically, the purpose of the safety interlock is to disable the vehicle when you're plugged in. It doesn't matter if you're charging or not. If the vehicle, if, if you're, electric vehicle supply equipment, your charge station, the EVSE. If that's plugged into your vehicle, we want the vehicle to be disabled so you can't drive off while it's plugged in, okay? We have that. Then we're gonna have an inertia switch. 
and the inertia switch will disable the vehicle if you're in a major collision, just like it disables the fuel pump in an internal combustion vehicle when you're in a major collision, so that it doesn't pump fuel all over the place. Well, this is going to shut down the car so that if you're pinned in and your foot's on the throttle, the wheels still aren't moving, you know, and first responders don't have to worry about that. Uh, again, you don't have to use it. We always do. So we've got the auxiliary battery. We've got switch and unswitched 12 volts. We've got our fuse block. We've got our safety interlock, our inertia switch. And then the last one is our low voltage cutout. And what that is, is that protects our traction pack from being over discharged. Okay, and this is all part of our 12 volt control circuitry. Basically, all of these things, if one of these things is triggered, if you, uh, if you don't have uh, uh, high enough traction pack voltage, the vehicle will be shut down. If you're in an accident, the vehicle will be shut down. Uh, if the vehicle is plugged in, again, it's disabled. Okay? So that's an example of your 12 volt uh, control circuitry. So now we'll go to the monitor and we'll look at a flow chart that kind of shows you this. Uh, so you'll kind of be able to picture what I've just been describing to kind of help make things a little clearer. So here's a flow chart of what I was talking about. You can see that there is Right here, our auxiliary battery, the ignition. I get control of my little pointer here. The ignition, fuse block, safety interlock, inertia switch, and low volt voltage cutout. That's our 12 volt control. Next, this is the traction pack portion, our high voltage, high current section. So here we're showing two separate uh, battery packs. We have our fuse, traction pack, uh, the second pack, our main disconnect switch, main contactor, and then our controller. And this KSI, that's a key switch input or interface. And you can see our low voltage, our, our 12 volt control circuit is controlling the KSI. Now on some controllers, they have a traction pack voltage input for the KSI. And in that case, our 12 volt control would activate a relay and the relay would allow traction pack voltage to go to the KSI. And we'll talk more about that later. And of course, uh, from the controller to our motor. Here's another layer added on. This is the charge circuit I talked about. And in this case, we're just showing that, uh, you know, we're getting power from the sun through our solar panels, through our electric vehicle supply equipment or charge station, it goes in through our charge port to our charger, and the charger of course is connected to our traction pack. And it goes through our disconnect switch so we can disconnect the traction pack from everything else. And then our last uh, system is our DC to DC converter. And it takes power from the traction pack and uh, reduces that down to anywhere from 13.8 to 14.6 volts. And we're going to talk more about that, uh, why that is, and so forth later on.